your weekend is going really well, so we are jumping right back into the reviews with a bit of a theme this month, which was not entirely intentional, but kind of intentional around the end, because I realized that I've read Dracul, and I've read the sequel, prequel, graphic novels to the Penny Dreadful series, which is all about vampires, and I wanted to reread Interview with the Vampire anyway. So, all of October is basically going to be vampires. I'm excited. I do, I'm excited. And I was thinking at one point, I think over time, I want to reread the entire Vampire Chronicles series anyway. I've got Interview, I've got all of the others, you can see them mostly right there. I've read all of them except the last one, Blood Communion, I think it's called. I even made a video recently about Prince Lestat in the Realms of Atlantis, so I might not like review that one again, but I'll still like, I'll still read it in the larger context of all of them. I don't know when I'll get to it again. But yeah, I might as well add it to the collection. I do need to get though Pandora and Vittoro. I need to get those ones. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Lestat and Louis just yet. We are here to talk about Dracul by Dacre Stoker and J.D. Barker. So yeah, we're going back to like the old fashioned vampires and I love it. So quick synopsis first before all of the spoilers, of course. It's basically about Bram kind of, it's an alternate universe. It's an alternate universe where Bram actually encountered vampires as a child. Bram Stoker, the original author, he's like a character in here with his entire family and their nanny is a vampire. That's not a spoiler, that's discovered pretty early on. That's like the main premise that gets him and his sister really looking. So the main synopsis, obviously, Bram, as a little kid, discovers that his nanny is a vampire. She vanishes and then Bram and his sister try to go discovering her, rediscovering her, looking for her later on when they're both adults, eventually recruiting their older brother as well. And along with recruiting their older brother, they also get the help of an older scholarly fellow who may have encountered these vampires before. It's not Van Helsing. <laughs> but that character is the perfect example of all of the intricate little details of the classic vampire story that we know, how Bram has been like surrounded by all of these little elements and then rewrites them into his own story to maybe like cope with the weird trauma. And it's just fun. It's just fun seeing all of those little old fashioned vampire powers, not like rewritten, but like being utilized again. And yeah, a lot of newer vampire stuff, they do still have like classic powers. I'm not thinking of certain sparkly ones. We all know that, but I mean, at least they were kind of fast and strong. So at least they had that going for them. But these are like the old fashioned classic powers. I know I keep saying that, but they're, they can walk in the sunlight. They don't burn up in the sunlight. They're weaker in the sunlight. They can turn into mist and fit through tiny little keyholes or like underneath door frames. They have hypnotic powers. They can hypnotize you into just like walking outside. They have illusions. They can still control animals. I think they can become animals. They can at least control animals. I don't remember if they become animals. Anyway, all of the fun classic powers are here. Along with the fun classic protections too. Like at one point, Bram is just in a room, the walls are covered in crosses and mirrors to try to prevent vampires, a certain guy, a certain vampire from coming inside to get him. We're going into slight spoilers here for right now. I'll talk about a few things in the beginning, a few characters, a few, uh, a few instances that I really enjoyed, but nothing too spoilery just yet. So story-wise, it starts off, I'll get to how it actually like starts off, starts off narratively and like formatting wise in a second, but the main timeline narration, Bram Stoker is a kid and he's a sickly little kid, but his nanny, Ellen, she heals him. He's dying one night as a 12 year old, but then she heals him by actually letting little Bram drink her blood. And then he gets stronger again and then she vanishes into the night. So now Bram and his sister remember that event. No, Ellen was not human. She did something to Bram and they want to find her again. The rest of the family doesn't quite believe them though. So later on in life, Bram and Matilda, yes, Matilda, sorry. I forgot the sister's name for a second. It's Matilda. And their older brother is Thornley. I like that name, Thornley. I don't know, I think it's a cool name. Anyway, the three team up to go hunt down, not hunt down, but find Ellen, find out what she did to Bram, and they come across that old scholar, like I mentioned. But circling back, it starts off with Bram as a kid, right? It starts off with him as a kid, him and Matilda's kids. And I'll admit for a second, I couldn't quite get into it because I wasn't expecting the book to start off exactly like that. And actually the book, weirdly enough, didn't entirely help this case in the first couple of pages because it starts off, there's like a prologue of adult Bram in this room. He's in this small room in this really tall tower. The tower's falling apart. 
He's covered in those crosses and the mirrors, like I mentioned, and something is trying to get at him. He's in danger. There's something talking to him, and it wants him dead. So Brim, in his panic, he's trying to just, like, he's, like, he's under siege. He's in this room. He's panicking. He's protecting himself. But he starts writing in his journal. And that's where the narration comes in of him being a kid. So it starts off with this really awesome, creepy, gothic image of him alone and scared in this room and something wants to kill him. And then all of a sudden he's a kid in a sick bed. So, I mean, I get why that happened. I get why that happened, setting up this cool scene. I was like, here's how I got here. I, yeah, I kind of realized that's the trope of like, I'm like, I bet you're wondering how I got here. I don't know, that's kind of been used a lot. But it did work out here because of the journal entries. The formatting of this story threw me off a little bit admittedly consistently but it's not a huge like down downfall of the story at all if anything i think it's written like this through journal entries and letters because the original was the original the original dracula by bram stoker is written entirely through letters from like mina and lucy weird news articles of certain things ghostly things happening and it's an homage to that which i completely respect i completely i'm, I'm glad they did that but it's weird because the moments where Br adult Bram is alone in that tower, it's all first person present tense. Like, I am now sitting in this chair. But then all of the journal entries are in like third person past tense where Bram went to sit down in the chair or Bram sat down in the chair. But then there are also letters that Matilda is writing, which is kind of first person past tense, where it's like, I went to go sit down in the chair. And it, it, you get used to it, but it threw me off for a bit. Anyway, that's more of like a formatting nitpick. And eventually with that kind of formatting trick of showing us little snippets of Bram, there's a kitty in the corner, of showing us those little snippets of Bram in that tower by himself and jumping back to the past stories with the journal entries of Bram, Matilda, and Thornley trying to find Ellen, trying to find out what's going on, seeing all these weird vampire demonic powers going on. Thornley's wife, Lucy, Lucy is possibly being attacked by a vampire. And now I'm really gonna be going into the spoilers. I'm just gonna have at it with the story. The three of them do eventually meet Ellen and the rest of her family, which is really fascinating because she's like 300 years old, but her family were recently mortals, not so recently mortal anymore. So Bram and, Bram and Co reunite with Ellen and we find out her entire origins of how she became a vampire she basically turned herself into one and was cursed by like an entire town and I think a very abusive husband. So her origins are completely unique to her, which is really fascinating. And then our main antagonist is our lovely Dracula. I shouldn't say lovely because he's not lovely here. I say that for nostalgia because you just, I love the vamps. And he is also fascinated by Ellen. I think because it's not overly said but I think it's because he's so fascinated that Ellen became a vampire on her own. I think kind of like he did. Because we don't get Dracula's origin story here. Which I'm okay with, but I'm also like slightly disappointed in because I wanted more of him. But that's fine. I like the air of mystery around him. He's the big bad guy. We don't need to know everything about him. He's just this weird, scary, mysterious figure in, in his like fancy clothes with a cape and a cane and a top hat. I love the imagery. He's a threat and he is threatening and he is scary. And he is fascinated by Ellen, I think because she made herself a vampire. He wants to like understand her that way, but she doesn't want to understand him because another word for just understand is creepy possessive love and ownership. Dracula wants to own Ellen, which is terrifying uh, on its own from like the woman's standpoint. And I think that's another trope that I caught on that it's not exactly a downside because Dracula did need like his own motivations to like be a bad guy and everything. But his main motivation is, I found you buried in this grave after moments where she like slaughtered an entire village. It was kind of awesome. But I found you buried in this grave and, and pinned there and I resurrected you again. And I gave you this giant castle. I gave you all of these riches. I brought you to my home. I gave you all of this jewelry. Why do you not love me, Ellen? And if you don't love me, no one can. I'm going to destroy your entire family and your old past lover. It's like, come on, Drac. You're, you're kind of, you're being possessive. You're not being very gentlemanly that we're kind of used to sometimes in the stories. And I think I've been a little spoiled from like other representations of Dracula. Actually, you know what? That's kind of it. 
I like the story. I love the origins. I love the powers of Dracula as the bad guy, but it's not my favorite representation of Dracula himself. But again, this does harken back to the original Dracula where he was not a gentleman. So I'm uh, fair. I just feel the trope of like, well, if you don't love me, no one can. I feel like that's been used, but it did have its own spin. So that was fun. And something else that I kind of actually wish was explored a little bit more was Dracula's fascina fascination with Bram. Because the two are just characters here. Bram is his own character in his own story and they meet and they talk. And Dracula is fascinated by Bram because this entire time during Bram's life, Bram's life, Ellen has been sneaking up to him, kind of like hypnotizing him, but also Bram is okay with this. He's been consenting to it the entire time of constantly drinking Ellen's blood vampire blood through his entire adult life ever since he was a kid dying in that sick bed. It's been keeping him alive as a human. And I'll get to that in a second. So Dracula is fascinated by Bram because he's been drinking this other vampire Ellen's blood the whole time, but staying human. One, I do wish there was more like fascination explained or at least explored there between Dracula and Bram. I would have loved to just see a conversation of those two for like a hundred pages of sitting down and talking. That'd be fun. <laughs> but one more nitpick that I actually just kind of thought of. Bram has been drinking this vampire lady's blood basically his entire life and he's still been aging. He's still human. Why didn't Bram Stoker become a, Dra a be become a Dracula at the end? Why didn't Bram become a vampire? Because that's how it like that's how canonically it works in, in this lore. Usually it's always different. I mean with Anne Rice it's just a bite and you're good. Yes, Alice? See, she agrees. <laughs> so yeah, why didn't Bram become a vampire? I don't know, that's not really explained. Throughout the story, he does have to stop drinking Ellen's blood because she leaves. And he's okay with that, aware that because he doesn't have the regular injections of vampire vampirism anymore, he'll get sick again. And he does, but like later on in, in age. And at the very end, in the last like couple of pages, this isn't a criticism or just anything in regards to like a review. I just really love the moment where older Bram is sitting by himself, writing out all of these events, organizing all of the letters and everything that he had, recounting this entire event in his one like big manuscript, maybe thinking of writing other things later on in life. And then Mina Harker walks into his office. Mina Harker walks into his office with a bunch of letters from her and her friend Lucy and Jonathan Harker and she walks up to Bram Stoker and says, hey, I have heard that you've been through some stuff and we might know a mutual adversary. Here's a bunch of manuscripts that I have written, a bunch of letters that I have known. Read them over, tell me what you think. I just wanna see what we can do with this. <laughs> I don't think they write a book right then and there, but I think it's just a way for like Mina and Bram to like, again, cope with the weird trauma that they've been through. And that was just fun. That was just a fun little like moment of the moment Mina walked in. I'm like, hey, it's her. Yeah. I was also at work when I read that ending. So a couple of my coworkers look over at me on my break and I'm like, what? It's a, it's a character showed up. Hi. Hi. Anyway, yeah, I hope that was a consensive, a concise review of Dracul by Dagger Stoker and JD Barker. Dagger Stoker has written more Dracula-esque things later on or before this. I definitely want to pick up those two. So I'm going to pick up those. Overall, I really enjoyed the story. It might have taken me a second to get into because I wasn't expecting kid Bram stuff. And the formatting threw me off a little bit. But I don't know, just know that going in that the formatting itself and the present tense third person, first person stuff kind of changes around. But the vampire powers are great. The origins are really fun. There's not as much Dracula as I was personally hoping, but there was still a lot of them and he was a really good antagonist. Honey. So yeah, that was basically my talking, chatting of this story. I'm sorry about the cat just coming and going. Feel free to like the video and subscribe. I will be posting every Friday as much as I can, lately about vampires, so that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Alice. I had a dog named Lucy. Just side thought, I had a dog named Lucy. I didn't actually name her Lucy, but to me, she was the Lucy from Dracula and it was great. She was a good dog. Anyway, yeah, feel too. I mentioned the subscribing, liking stuff, all of that. Um, I have a Patreon now if you wanna help support this kind of thing and my own writing careers. Oh, now you're sitting down. Now you're sitting pretty. Anyway, we will see you guys next week. Bye.